In this video, I'm going to look at some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, focus on JavaScript. I'm going to make an object of the sort of old style prototype approach. And we're going to make an array of objects. I'm going to use a big, a big long string that we're going to parse. And we're going to use that to uh, populate the, put the information into the array of objects. The URL for this code can be found at the, at the URL scene. The code can be found at the URL scene. Okay, so here I am in Visual Studio Code. And I've opened up the live server. And here is the page we are making. It, it's about, it's just a very data-driven object. There are not many, I don't think there are any methods at this stage. Um, we just have, titles of movies, ranks of movies, ratings of movies, a number of people who rated the movie, a brief description, and uh, an image. Okay, this is in a, these are divs in a grid style, and then a sort of weird font. Okay. So here is, we have some style here is, that that file, the TTF, the the, the text true font is a uh, true text font is, is that file is next to the HTML. There's the HTML. Here's the TTF. The two TTFs. And so this is that's a way for me to. I use a font that's not a sort of a normal, everybody understands that fonts, you can sort of connect to it uh, by, by a URL, by sort of HTTP, but here I'm just putting it into a, a file that is a, a local file. And then this is sort of me naming it. So I, this is the name of the file. And then when I refer to it below, it'll be called the bleeding font. Um, my, my H1s use the bleeding font, as do my, the span of the rank also uses the bleeding font and is a very large number, three, sort of three times the normal uh, font size. Here's the sort of uh, grid. So there is an outside, which I'm calling, which is in a class called the wrapper, but there's only one, so it could have been an ID. I could have styled it by ID. It's a, a grid style. Um, there are three columns separated by a gap. And then sort of, so the overall width was 180 plus 180 plus 250. And then there were two gaps. So another 10, that's the 620. Um, there's some radius. So there probably something is rounded in there. Box is the sort of shared style of all of the parts of the of the grid, and uh, so they they have a color and a font color and padding and so on. And then we have the individual styling of the cells: where they located, do they span? So this one spans two columns. It's in the first row and the first column and spans two columns. The second one, B, is in the third column and spans three rows and the first row, but spans three rows, and et cetera. So we can see that. So the, the first cell spans uh, two columns, the second uh, three rows. So that is the grid styling. I'm going to collapse that. And here's the HTML. Uh, I have a header. Here's my uh, wrapper class div, which is the sort of container of the uh, grid styling. And then here are my individual uh, divs, A, B, C, D, also with box. So you can see that I have, that this one has two classes. It has the box style, the generic style, and then it has specifically the A styling, which made it span, put it in, a row one, column one, and spanning two columns. We put in here a select, which is right now empty of any options. 
the, the second cell has an image um, with an ID and that for now, no source. Um, C is where I show the, the rank. Uh, D is where I show the rating and uh, E is where I show the description. Okay, so now we're ready for the code. I'm making an array of something. These are going to be my objects when I'm done. And here again, I'm doing the old prototype. So we work in the old JavaScript style, we work with a uh, sort of a function. So we, the key, you see the keyword function. I'll show you a different later example. I'll show you using the keyword class, which is more modern in JavaScript. But here is the prototype, prototype approach and you use the keyword function. You give uh, this object a name and uh, I'm gonna work where you, when you instantiate you're, we're going to fill in all the properties. So there are different approaches one could make. I'm going to make an approach where I'm going to set all the properties as I as I instantiate it. So I have the rank, the rating, the title, the image, the number, and the description. And I'm just I have some data, and that was the sort of I think the order within my uh, data file. So. That's why that image, that's why that ordering. Um, you can make these here, A rank must match down here, the right-hand side of the assignment statement. So you must, when you instantiate, you must send it a rank. And then the rank is used to give a value for the current object, this, and its property rank. And um, some people will use a uh, rank for all of them. Um, and that's, that's, that works. Uh, I'm using a different name here, just a slightly different name, um, just to emphasize that it's these two things have to match. And then this is what you use sort of after the fact. So this A rank just exists sort of for constructing purposes and then we're done with it. And then rank is the property of the object that we will use. So this prop, these objects have properties rank, rating, title, image, uh, the number rating, and a description. I am adding, I had a select. It had no, it had no options, but I have a select and I'm giving it, but I didn't give it a, an event here. I'm giving it the event. So I'm giving it a change event and saying, choose movie. So I will define choose movie below. Right now I'm doing code that's not in any function. And so it gets executed as soon as I'm at the, the bottom of the page and reach the script area. Here is my very long data, just a, a very, very large string. So here is, uh, here's the information on Psycho. It was the top movie. It had a rating of 8.7. It was uh, named Psycho. It was the year as part of the title. So it's not a separate quantity. We could use some, some uh, string manipulation to separate them, but I don't. Here's the name of the image file. Here's the number of people who uh, gave it that rating. And here's my description. A young woman steals, blah, blah, blah. Very long, and, and then here is a number sign, and then our hashtag, and then two. So the separation between one movie and the next movie is the hashtag or number sign, and the separator between the individual pieces of data is this vertical bar. And I can't use uh, like a comma is another standard. A delimiter and I can't use that because I have commas in my numbers and commas in some of my descriptions. Okay, so here I'm taking, uh, I'm going to uh, parse this data or split this data twice and my first splitting is on the pound sign. So I'm getting, taking the big long string, splitting it on pound sign 
and I'm making an array of, so that will produce an array for me and I'm calling that uh, horror data lines. Okay, so I haven't, uh, I will show at another time sort of how to read a file and put this information in a file, but for now I'm just making it a big long string. Okay, split up on the pound sign, so I have an array. Now I'm gonna loop through that array. This is sort of an old fashioned loop. And I'm looping over the length of going, starting at zero, going up to not including the length of horror data lines going up by one. And I am taking the ith horror data line and splitting it on the vertical bar. So I'm taking all the move, all the information about psycho and splitting it into pieces. And then here was my first go at it, 119. I used the keyword new to instantiate a horror movie. And I had called these pieces subdata. And so here was subdata sub data zero, subdata one. But I had chosen this order of the properties in my constructor to match the order here in, in my data string. And so instead of saying subdata zero, subdata one, subdata two, I can just say dot, 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 subdata. I can use this, it's called a spread operator. Okay, so either of those works. So 119 worked, 120 worked. Uh, this is a little more succinct looking, but it's this is maybe clear to sort of an older fashioned uh, coder. Okay, now I am grabbing uh, the select. So this is just grabbing in code the select. I'm looping over the movies. This was an old fashioned loop over the movies. Here's a more newfangled loop over the movies. And there's an element and a counter. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm writing a function, a fat arrow function to evaluate as I, to sort of, to work through each iteration. So I'm creating an option. Uh, the text of the option is the title of the element. And when I work with an, uh, uh, an array, I usually like to make the value an I, the index of the array, and I'm appending that option to my select. With, with selects and options, you can also use add, but append child is sort of, I don't know, a little more generic and works in more situations. I am declaring an event of the change type, and then I am dispatching that event. So that makes it look like when the page starts as if the user had uh, gone through ch chosen event. So when I have a, a dropdown list, it looks like the first item is selected, but there's no event in selecting it in JavaScript. But this is sort of forcing that uh, event like I chose psycho, not not just that the psycho is displayed in the select, but that I as you know the the user, whoever that might be, but me as I'm running it, um, acts like I chose psycho from the list. And then here is my uh, event for the change the change event handler. Um, I'm going to the select and grabbing the value, which is an index. And then once I have the index and array of objects, then you know you're golden. Then you can get everything you want. So the source of the image is my movies, my index dot image. The description, div description, inner HTML is my movies square bracket my index dot uh, describe. So this is how you get the my movies as an array my movie square bracket, my index is an object, and then this is the image property of that object. So using the standard dot notation to get an object, I'm sorry, a property of an object. And we have an array of objects. So we have a name, an index to get the object, and the dot, and then the property. And there's the rating, and there's the rank, and then there's the number rate. And we're at the bottom. So that's what I wanted to show you in this example. Thank you very much for your attention. More to follow. 
this was prototype. I'll show you the class type at another time. Thank you.